CBS is blowing it, and their decision not to air a documentary on the Koch brothers is pretty horrifying proof of it. But it wasn't always this way. Back on November 7, 1967, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed into law the Public Broadcasting Act. That act set up public broadcasting in the United States by establishing the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which led to the creation of the Public Broadcasting Service, or PBS, and National Public Radio, or NPR. After signing the act into law, Johnson said that it announces to the world that our nation wants more than just material wealth. Our nation wants more than a chicken in every pot. We in America have an appetite for excellence, too. While we work every day to produce new goods and to create new wealth, we, shall mo we want most of all to enrich man's spirit. That is the purpose of this act. Sort of like in the spirit of the BBC. The Public Broadcasting Act of 1967 states that it is in the public interest to encourage the growth and development of public radio and television broadcasting, including the use of such media for instructional, education, and cultural purposes. It is necessary and appropriate for the federal government to complement, assist, and support a national policy that will most effectively make public telecommunication services available to all citizens of the United States. You know, when public broadcasting in America was first established, the intent was that Congress would provide funding for the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which would in turn divide that funding up among various public television and radio stations around the country, PBS and NPR. And this worked great for years. The public broadcasting system and national public radio brought educational programming and independent news and political analysis to millions of Americans. But with the onset of Reaganomics 33 years ago, federal funding for the Corporation for Public Broadcasting has been slashed. As a result, public broadcasting institutions now rely more and more on corporate and billionaire cash to operate, which is probably why PBS and NPR now seem to filter what they play on their airwaves so that they don't anger their wealthy backers. This is where the documentary Citizen Coke comes in. Citizen Coke is a documentary about money and politics, focusing heavily on the uprising that took place in Wisconsin in 2011 and 2012. It talks about how the Citizens United decision paved the way for secretive political spending by major players, including the Koch brothers. As Brennan Fisher over at the Center for Media and Democracy's PR Watch points out, the documentary was originally supposed to air on PBS stations nationwide, but its funding was abruptly cut off when, it appears, David Koch was offended. But why would PBS care if David Koch didn't like one of their documentaries? Well, it turns out that uh, David Koch, according to The New Yorker, has donated upwards of $23 million to public television. And when you donate $23 million to public television, you get more than just a tote bag and a coffee mug. You apparently get to dictate the on-the-air program. This is the kind of influence and control that we see in mainstream media today. Thanks to the giant transnational corporations that own them, mainstream media outlets tailor their programming to appease their corporate backers and appeal to the advertisers. Can't do anything about the big corporations that own our so-called mainstream media, short of the Sherman Act. But public broadcasting is still, at least in part, both legally and morally a part of our commons. It's time to take back our public airwaves and cut off the corporate and billionaire control over them so that David Koch and his buddies don't get to choose what you and I watch on TV. And the only way to do that is to fully fund public radio and television. Call your member of Congress and tell them to protect funding to the Corporation for Public Broadcasting so it can pick back up its work to enrich man's spirit.